Hello, my name is Paul and I am proud to be a science nerd. I studied physics in college and graduate school. And later on, I worked as an astrophysicist at NASA. Now I teach astronomy and physics to college students. I'll be taking you on a journey to explore the connections between science and faith. Thank you for joining me. In this video, we'll be exploring more about science and faith. But first, I'd like to say something about lobsters. In order to grow, lobsters must periodically shed their skin. The process is called molting. When a lobster molts, its hard shell gets soft and splits down the back. When the split is long enough, the lobster pushes backwards out of its old skin. It's a stressful process. A newly molted lobster is vulnerable because its new shell is very soft. So for protection, it hides for several weeks until its new skin gets hard again. A lobster molts more than a dozen times as it grows into adulthood. If it did not molt, it would die. Now, during late high school and college, my growing understanding of science drove me to abandon my faith. I saw Christianity and science as competing ways of looking at the world. They were so different. Both could not be true, I thought. At the time, I thought of God as little more than a large and powerful, loving, invisible man in the sky. And I tended to read the Bible as a collection of outdated and magical stories that had no significance for me or for the modern world. Science, on the other hand, seemed like, to me, to be a collection of indisputable facts that spoke for themselves and required no interpretation. And for me, it was either one or the other, science or faith, and I chose science. Now, this concerned some people. My parents worried. Some of my friends were Christians, and some of them tried to reason me back into the church. They came at me with arguments designed to help me see the error of my ways. It also concerned my girlfriend, Elizabeth. She loved me, and I loved her, but she was a Christian, and I wasn't, and this made our relationship difficult. Nevertheless, I refused even to consider changing my mind, and it looked like my days of believing were over. But the truth is, I was like a molting lobster. Throughout my high school and college years, my religious skin grew tight and uncomfortable as I learned more and more about the cosmos. My understanding of God constricted my thinking and I felt trapped by it. So, I shed my Christianity. The thing I left behind was not faith, but only a particular set of childhood beliefs. What I discovered is that true faith does not harden. True faith is always asking questions and looking for answers, sometimes very aggressively. Faith is a living and evolving thing. It grows as we grow, and it looks different at different stages of life. And in my case, what looked on the outside like a triumph of science over religion, was really just a step in the development of my faith. You may ask, how did my faith come back? What happened? When Christians talked to me, I always got the feeling that they saw me as a kind of a lost soul in need of saving. And you know what? It made me feel like I was just one of their projects. But on the day I met Elizabeth, she sat down across the table and she looked directly at me, and it was very different. She wanted to know me, not fix me or save me. And that made all the difference. So it was love and not an argument that first won me back into the Christian faith. But I was still a scientist. My faith craved understanding. I still wanted to know stuff. I wanted to find a way to think about God in light of science and how to think about science in light of faith. 
I was a physics grad student when I began to pray and worship again. And I started to meet a lot of people who took both faith and science very seriously. Their faith was more mature than mine, and they understood science a lot better than I did. These friends saw faith and science as both and, and not as either or. I began to think of faith and science in terms of cooperation instead of competition, and that was my fundamental breakthrough. Another thing that changed is that instead of seeing the Bible as just a book of fairy tales, I began to see it as a narrative, a story that spoke deeply to me. I realized that scripture is about my life and the lives of all people and even about all creatures. For example, consider the first few chapters of Genesis. As a teenager, I knew it was impossible to square a historical reading of those chapters with science. That's one of the reasons I dismissed the Bible in the first place. But once I opened up and read Genesis more deeply and more mm, poetically, it came alive. It became a true and sacred story about relationships. These relationships are between God, human beings, other creatures, and even the cosmos itself. Like when God says, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. For me today, Genesis is a story about the cosmos I love and about who I am as a tiny and imperfect, but divinely made part of it. Seeing it through these new eyes helped me for the first time to feel at home in the cosmos. I eventually left my scientific career for seminary. There, I learned that Genesis has been read poetically ever since it was written. And as for the rest of the Bible, it's not just one kind of writing, it's a mixture of many genres, each one of which must be read and understood in a different way. As my reading of the Bible changed, so did my view of God. God became less of a, you know, an oversized grandfather in the sky and more of a mysterious and always present reality. But none of this would have happened if I had not shed my childhood beliefs like a lobster losing its shell. So I wonder, do you have any old ideas which might need to be shed in order for your faith to grow? Together, let's continue to explore how we might enlarge our understanding of God through science.